Hey there, how are you? I know it's, um, it's been a minute. <laughs> I feel like I do that with every single update um, just because I know you, I know you understand this. This year has been absolutely bananas. So um, I mentioned it on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, I really genuinely appreciate the thoughts and the well wishes. I hope that you are doing well with your project pants, that you're having an awesome summer with your family and friends. And I'm, I, I know I say this, but I, I seriously am ready to get back to filming because in the last couple of um, weeks, especially, I've really found a new zest for my makeup, um, just in enjoying wearing it, enjoying loving it. I have some goals in front of myself for things that I want to do with Project Pan. So just a little sidebar of how I got to that. This is a, I think it'd be a good conversation to have in general. So if you're interested, go on and leave me a comment um, below if you'd like a more dedicated video on this. But I don't know about you, but in the last couple of weeks, I've really, um, I, I just, I, I come to accept like where I am just in terms of where I am in my current, um, you know, place in life like with my family and with my with my hair oh that's another <laughs> that's another reason I'm loving makeup so okay I turned 40 a couple of weeks ago so while I'm excited um for this new chapter in life it's also been um, a moment of acceptance <laughs> to say the least and funny story so months back i decided to do the you know ditch the dye no more dyeing my hair and i was all excited because you know the grays were coming in like sporadically and i was like oh yeah it's gonna be awesome you know they're coming in slow i've got time to adapt but i swear every day i wake up now my hair is changing so quickly <laughs> and it's like do you see this like all of this coming in and like the size of my hair and I will tell you, on the days that I wear makeup, I feel like myself and I feel like a younger, brighter version of myself like I've always been because the days that I don't wear makeup, I don't know if it's just like the buzz kill or like the mood kill or I don't know, but it's just like, you just feel, bleh, you know, and frumpy and it's just not cool and, um, I mean, there are days like there are days that I will just go makeup free. In fact, we took a vacation to Philly. P.S. And by the way, y'all have an awesome city. All of you who live in Philadelphia, leave me a heart in the description box below because I mean, I just I had the greatest time. It's such a cool vibe to that city. Um, but the entire time we were there, I was like, I'm not going to wear makeup. I'm not going to pack it on the plane. You know, we did the whole like just pack a carry on thing. And man, when I like look i mean it was it was a good thing because it was warm outside and we were doing all this walking and whatnot but when i look at pictures of myself with all this gray hair coming in and uh, well it's not even gray on the side it's like white white my kids love to comment on it on a regular basis so that's another thing um but um i just i don't know i felt so old <laughs> Like, it's just not, and I missed my makeup. So now that I'm getting, you know, into it and like panning, I'm so excited. So that was a long sidebar. But again, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to have a discussion on this, because I think it needs a moment. I really do. Um, in fact, you know, turning 40 this past summer, I feel like I finally found my style and like, you know, new glasses. I felt like red glasses needed a moment. So, um, oh, I guess if you're, if you're curious, the lip I'm wearing, by the way, love this combo. This is the Natasha Denona lip combo. I've really been into red lipstick lately, like really, really been into red lipstick and I'm figuring out ways to incorporate it as a neutral with everything. Like today, I've got it paired with like a purple smoky eye that we'll talk about in just a minute that really has a lot of Juvia's Place shadows and Natasha Denona shadows. But this is the, um, it came in a duo. It's the uh, Natasha Denona I Need a Rouge Lip Crayon. It's a really skinny lip pencil in a scarlet red color. And in fact, this is the first time that I've kind of like worn it down to the nub. So I need to figure out um, in terms of sharpening it. So I'll keep you posted on that. And then the uh, lipstick that complements it is the Natasha Denona I Need a, a Rouge Lip in the shade Stiletto. Beautiful red color. So as you can see, it's not quite, it's not an orangey red. It's definitely, I would say fire engine red. There's a, like a hint of blue, 
but I do feel like it's incredibly neutral if you have a um, neutral skin tone or even if you veer on the warmer side, I do feel like it could be pretty flattering, but also be flattering if you have a cooler skin tone where you need more of the blue. So wanted to share that with you because I have gotten a lot of comments on my red lips lately. Ah, the other one that I've been wearing too, I need to share this one with you. I actually wore this when we went and saw um, Oppenheimer over the weekend because I wanted something that would be a little bit more stay proof from eating popcorn and whatnot. So. The other one that I've been wearing has been the Urban Decay, um, their liquid lipstick, and this is in the shade Unbreakable. It is definitely more orangey red than the red I'm wearing, but still very, very pretty. So Unbreakable by Urban Decay. I do love this formula, except it wears a little weird <laughs> um, when you start eating and drinking things because you definitely lose out the middle of the color, so then you get like the that awful, awful line, except more of a like, <laughs> it's just the middle of your lips that disappear. So you definitely wanna make sure that you take this on the go to touch up because I literally only did one layer of this and then I went back over very lightly with a second layer as the movie progressed and I knew that I was gonna have some issues like leaving the theater not look ridiculous when I walked out with half a red lip on. So, sidebar, okay. As we get into the Pan That Palettes, I have been doing the Kicking It Old School Pan That Palette, the Better Together Pan That Palette, as well as the Standard Pan That Palette to finish off my Nabla Cosmetics. So everybody who is um, in charge of all those Pan That Palettes is in the description box below, so check out their channels. We are gonna start with Nabla because this is the palette that I've put in front of myself. If you're new to my videos, I guess I should have said that in the beginning, but welcome. Um, I have been working on the Nabla Cosmetics palette ever since we went through 2022. Now I'm down into the last like couple of, of shades in the palette. So let me show you where I was last update. And I believe that last update was what, back in April? Something like that. So we've had some time. And then here is where I am now. As you can see, the only shade that really has a lot of progress is this you know matte black shade over here called unlisted i did finally accomplish my goal of clearing out the corner of the pan so bonus 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 however that being said seeing how long it took me to do that i have decided that if i do have black eyeshadow left in this palette at the end of the year I'm gonna go on and call it done because literally like I've used this as a liner for this is year two and it's taking me so long. I mean, the fact that we're already at the end of July at this point, I really do question whether or not I'm gonna be able to finish this by December. So just kind of, I'm, I'm being honest, this may still be around in December and I'm still comfortable and satisfied that I would have finished this palette. I will be going back in to work on cubism. I've decided in terms of wearing this look because it's it's my armadillo gray smoky eye. In fact, I still owe you the get ready with me. Truth be, you know, you know, on, to be honest, um, I have not worn gray eyeshadow in quite a while because it's just not a summery look for me. Like it's it's too freaking hot. I mean, like we, we have days around here that are 108. I'm not gonna be wearing gray eyeshadow. Let's be real honest. Um, so I, I will, you know, get you that video because I will be going back to this look. In fact, the look I'm wearing now is one that I panned, um, I want to say not last year, may have been the year before, but it's, it's a go-to of eyeshadows that I really just wanted to make some progress on, but I have decided I'm going to go back to that armadillo smoky eye probably in August. Um, at the earliest, but definitely in September, because I think if I dedicate myself from September through December, I can definitely finish this in my crease. So that's my goal for this. I definitely want to finish Cubism. I won't call the palette done before that point, but with Untitled, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, painting a black eyeshadow is no small task, and that one is definitely proving to be no small task. Okay, then that takes us into kicking it old school. I do have a lot of progress on this palette. The one that I chose is my MAC um, Warm Neutrals palette. So let me show you where I was before in that last update back in April. 
And here is where I am currently. The biggest change I feel like is in this shade right here, which I believe, let me look real fast, is the shade, not Honey Lust, uh, looks like Amber Lights, maybe. I think it's Amber Lights. I have actually been using this as a facial highlight because it looks very similar on my skin to MAC Soft and Gentle. So as you can see, I am so pleased that I have hit pan. And at first I thought I was just gonna hit pan and then call it a day, but now that I can see progress every time I stick my brush in there and I just use a small fan brush and I go through and dust the tops of my cheeks and then I go down the bridge of my nose and I put a little bit on my Cupid's bow, um, I've decided I'm gonna go on and put it in front of myself to finish the shadow before the end of the year. I've also continued working on this basic, you know, creamy white shade over here called Brulee. It's the easiest thing to go on and put in my inner corners. I wear it on my brow bone. It's just taking forever to go on and, and finish this off. So I'm curious if this is gonna take me into the end of the year, we'll see. But I, I, I put it in front of myself, I do wanna finish that shadow. The other one that I've been really kind of pleasantly surprised is I'm finally getting into the corner of this espresso shade over here because I felt like I, I stalled in my progress for a long time. I mean, this is what I use in my brows. And when I wear a warmer eye look, I will go on and put it in my outer corner of my eye. But lately I've been gravitating towards an Anastasia shadow. So this one really gets very, very minimal light-handed use on a day-to-day -day basis. But that's where I am with that. So here we go. I'm about to like go in front of myself before we finish up the end of the year. I'm gonna have three completely pan shades out of here. I'm also thinking about going back into this Honey Lust um, shadow right here and pairing this like with a burgundy look because as we go into the next palette, I guess, okay, let's, um, let's call the next two the better together because I've really kind of come to terms with Juvia's Place shadows because um, in terms of the better together, pan that palette with my Z palette, I've had quite a few um, Juvia's Place shadows. So I feel like that's gonna be the big lesson that I take away from this year is pretty much panning Natasha Denona and Juvia's Place. So let me show you where I was with my Z palette. But back in April, this is where I was with my Z palette. And then here is where I am currently. Now I have swapped out a few of the shadows because I went in with things that I would use more often, but let's talk about where we are. I was able, these two shadows up here were um, shades that I've used as bronzers. This one was a Too Faced shadow called Peach Tea um, that came out of the uh, Peachy Matte Palette. This was a lighter Juvia's Place shadow that looked very similar to Benefit's Hula. I went through and just decided to use it as a bronzer and knock it out. This shade down here was also a very similar shade. It's another Juvia's Place shadow. I, I don't remember which palette it came out of, but the shade on this was a little bit deeper. And because we've been in summer and I've had a little bit more uh, color to my skin, I went through and used this as a bronzer because one of the things that I've noticed, Juvia's Place shadows pan very, very quickly because the pans are very shallow. So if you're wanting to make progress, especially if you're using them to multitask on areas around your face, whether it be a blush or bronzer or face highlight, definitely you are setting yourself up for success picking up brand like Juvia's Place. So that's already three shadows over here that I finished. The other one that I recently finished in the last week has been, this was a peachy coral shade from one of the Juvia's Place palettes. I used this in my crease. I used this as a blush. Um, I did reach a point, I guess, when we were in about March or April that part of the pan cracked. Um, so that was really unfortunate. And from there, I repressed it. I was able to use what was left and now I can call it done. The other Juvia's Place shadow that does have some difference from last time you saw it is this bronze eyeshadow. I went through for several months and I wore this on my lid in combination with my MAC Warm Neutrals palette because I wanted to make some progress in the, let me just show you really quickly. 
I wanted to make progress in this brown kind of shimmery shade right here just because I knew it would take a long time um, just to kind of see about some progress then I would still go through with this as my highlight I would go through the, with this as my um, or eye highlight this is my face highlight I actually really enjoy that look in fact if I have a picture on hand I'll go want to put it here of what that looks like because it's just a good standard everyday wearable makeup look there's nothing you know surprising or you know um, magical about it but it definitely like I just felt pretty when I wore it so when I hit pan in this shadow that's when I decided to really make some progress in my um, Natasha Denona palette because I put it out in front of in front of you um, that I was kind of contemplating panning the Natasha Denona Triochrome palette because the first shade that I pulled out to really use has been this Garmin shade and as you can see I have massive progress from last time. I have been using this diligently every time I wear makeup as my crease shade, crease transition shade. And then currently I've also been going through this shade right here. Let me pop open the palette real quick from Triochrome. This is the shade Manganese. So this is what my Natasha Denona Triochrome palette is looking like. I pulled out a couple of shades and I did get a little bit of wear out of Scarab over here, but I will be honest, I have not been in the mood to wear it because last time I wore it, I don't know if my eyes were just really tired or red, but somebody asked me if I was high and I was like, no, <laughs> it's just my makeup. <laughs> so I was like, maybe I need to stay away from shimmery greens. I don't know, but sidebar a little bit of a joking moment there because then he felt like he stuck his foot in his mouth and that was just really uh, awkward and uncomfortable so i i have not had the desire to wear <laughs> this color since that moment because i was like mm, nope no thank you um but i haven't enjoyed going through using other shadows from this palette and i found so many similarities because with the didactic shade down here this coral shade i'm leaning toward those all the time with my blush and like I said, going through my crease to put a little bit of warmth in there. So I figured, why, why not? You know, let's let's see how much progress I can make with this Natasha Denona palette. Um, the other shadow that I made some progress in down here is this shade from Too Faced. This is called Truffled. Um, I want to say, which palette did it come out of? Maybe chocolate, mm, maybe the semi-sweet chocolate bar. I don't remember. If you remember, go want to leave a comment for people that, that would find this helpful um, below because I, I don't, I truly don't remember which palette this came out of. I went through and I used this as a contour for a little bit. I used it in my brows um, because I would mix it with that um, espresso brown shade and I really do enjoy it, but right now I'm just kind of feeling indifferent to it. Um, so I'm just going to leave it in there for a later date and then see how much progress I can make. So the rest of these shadows I have brought in, this is an Anastasia shade that was very similar to the, um, the deep, deep purple shade, Rowdy, the deep purple shade that I loved from the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette. I fell in love and that was how I panned it. I used it as an outer corner shade paired with shades like manganese and then I would go through with the Juvia's Place shadow and the peach that I'll show you in just a little bit and it was just beautiful. So when I found this shade, it's not exactly a dupe, but it's close enough and in my opinion, it's helping me to make progress in yet another eyeshadow. So um, I believe, let's see what shade this is it's called deep plum from Anastasia Beverly Hills if you want a reference or to pick up the single shadow on your own and then when I switched out the green just because like I said I'm really not every time I open up my palette and I'd see that green I'm like eh, whatever I went on and switched it to the Natasha Denona triochrome color flip shadow because I figured this would go well with burgundy as we get into the fall this would go well with this manganese shade it would go well with the deep plum so maybe I have an opportunity to finish out these shadows after I work on the armadillo eyes with that cubism shade from Nabla so and the rest of these I'm going to just you know use them as I see fit and I definitely could see myself going back into that bronze to make some serious progress so that's where we are with better together then um, as a last palette to better together I suppose um, I guess we could put it in cake and it old school as well but I've really had a moment with my Juvia's Place um, this is the Nubian 3 Coral palette and I have made the decision 
that I want to see how much I can pan from this palette. Um, so let me show you where I was last time that we updated. Hopefully the lighting is not going to be super weird. And this is where I am currently. My goal is to hit pan in as many of these eyeshadows. I enjoy wearing this with my armadillo eye look. This is the current shadow that I'm wearing on my lid. So let's see if I can finish it off in the next month or two. I'm also wearing this to um, blend out my crease. And I'm going through with this shadow as my blush. So fingers crossed that I'm going to make some significant progress and I already have plans to go into this burgundy shade. I have plans to go into this shade when I finish cubism. So I am excited. I, I really feel like it's going to give me a rounded out opinion on Juvia's Place shadows since I've used these for multiple palettes and give me some, some life lessons to launch forward in what I continue to want out of my makeup collection. So on that note, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for giving me part of your day to day. I appreciate you. I wish you all the best in your panning. Let me know how you're doing in your panning. I'm catching up on everybody's videos. I am loving all the pan that palette updates, the pan those eyeshadows, um, the project pans. And I love that many of you are coming out with traditional project pans of like project 10 pans and whatnot. I'm thinking about jumping into one myself because I do feel like it's time. Um, to do that. So until next time, I, I promise, I promise it is not going to be so long in terms of updating. I just, I needed to have a moment to just breathe and live life and enjoy my family and just take care of what I need to take care of because I've got a lot on my plate right now. But like I said, I wish you all the best and I look forward very much to catching up with you soon. Until then, adios.